Automatic and committed to order. First order of business approval of the minutes. I have a motion to that effect. So moved. Uh, motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next on the agenda, update on courthouse renovations. Ben, you want to come on up and join me? I'll start out, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Ben, ben, ben will be here to fill in all the details, I'm sure. But uh, I saw the company that was awarded the contract uh, mm -hmm. from Laverne. Uh, they showed up today. Uh, so they have basically started. They were taking some measurements mm -hmm. and other things. Uh, ben, you may be able to, since you discussed with them. They were matching the matching paint. I think it's what they were doing okay. to this morning was matching their paint colors. Okay, we're trying to figure out where to actually place them inside the loop mm -hmm. where they can start bringing in the materials for construction where it's kind of out of the way, but still, but we have to get permission even though we own the in inner loop, we still have to get permission from the city to tell us what spaces, is it, am I correct in that? Mm -hmm. Tell us. Take it off their route, the, the yeah. ticket people, the ticket parking people. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, our contractor getting two, three tickets a day, so it wouldn't be good. So uh, it's a 180-day project. Um, so we'll start seeing some improvement. I'm sure they're like I told you last month. We we ask them to start on the east side since everything is coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, Halloween, Santa Claus, those different events will be on the east side compared to the west side. So they'll try to get that one done first. The sewer line, I was woke up at 2 o'clock this morning going, what am I going to do about sewer line? It's terrible I think about this stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. The, right now the, the sewer line is under the basement level. Okay. But, and so we're going to keep that attached and use it as a storm just for storm water. Gotcha. And then we're going to raise the actual sewer up to the first floor level, or just under the first floor level. And that's what the city it's has going to located a manhole, manhole so contained. that we have a, so we, up until then, we never even had a place to, didn't really have a place to connect. And so now we So the courthouse really won't have to, we won't be shut down and have to put port bodies out. No, sir. All right, that's no, sir. Great. <laughs> that was a, <laughs> Turned out a pretty good dream then. You know, the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I have to answer about all those women had to go out to a porter party when it turned cold in November. Okay. okay that's good. Any questions about the courthouse renovation? The sixty the six months starts now. Started yesterday. So that, that was your day one if you want to eight. Yes, sir. That start the clock running. Are there any and there are the damages? LD, okay, so okay. Yeah, there are damages. So uh, talks, the clock is ticking for them. I'm mm -hmm. sure they want to get on that as quickly as possible. Okay, if not, next thing on the agenda, uh, update on old judicial building. Yes, sir, Mr. Pick Picklesheimer, we met Ben and, and Rob. We all met with uh, uh, Mike and uh, on PDA. Leslie. Leslie. Leslie was there from PBA, and um, I think uh, uh, IT. Uh, they came over and we, we toured and started looking for things. Uh, we I asked them to go ahead and, and let's get going, you know. The Steve Johnson, the architect, was architect there as was well. There. So. He came down, and so I think he said he needed two weeks to put, uh, put everything together and then we'll come back and make the presentation to be ready to go within two weeks. And then they'll, I guess they'll have to start looking for contractors. They'll start interviewing contractors at that point in time. But Ben did ask Mike concerning <coughs> the old judicial building and the archives building, if they could maybe interview some of the same contractors for both projects. So while we're talking about old, uh, the, the, the archives building, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, so he, two weeks on Old Judicial, and then uh, he told you, Ben, Mike told Ben, uh, 
it'll be two weeks before they can interview. I don't know why they can start interviewing uh, contractors for the archives building, but everything's signed, sealed, delivered, signed off on from the city, permits are ready to be pulled. That's so, uh, am I correct in that? Yes, sir. That's the, they're after they, they're waiting on a contract from the PBA, the architect's waiting on a contract from the PBA because they'll have to change their front end of their specs and then they'll have to adjust their specs a little bit to match what the PBA is going to require. And that'll probably add another, you could add another, I don't know, week to 10 days to before they would have to redo a little bit of the, so probably it looks like right now could potentially be four weeks before that would probably be the soonest if they picked a contractor right off the bat. You know, so. Four weeks to start. Two weeks. If to they, it just depends on how long they take to interview a general contractor. Sure. So if they're not going to start that for two weeks, then so we're we'll, looking at thirty days probably. Could be. Could be, easily. Could be a little longer. Yes, ma'am. It could be. Could be shorter, could be longer. <laughs> mm -hmm. That project is holding up a lot of projects. Yes, it is. No, so we need to uh, we need to put that on the fast burner or whatever that archives well, project. I, I, yeah, I, I'm gonna reach out to some of the other um, members of PBA. I, I know Mike has some health issues and might be delaying a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So maybe we can. We, we need to get going. We don't start getting into bad weather. Okay, next on the agenda update on one stop building. Well, everything signed off from the city. I uh, talked to, I got an email from Nick. Nick had sent that to uh, the attorney uh, with the Department of Safety, and then he sent an email back and he said, Well, really, it needs to go to this lady down in the STEM office in um, Department of General Services who will handle that, so he, as of Monday of this week, he has sent that to them mm -hmm. uh, to kind of sign off on, yeah. and they wanted to know uh, kind of approximation of what we would be charging we had to kind of put in there, so we called Larry Sims and John Hardy and kind of got a, uh, between those two, and kind of got an average of what Class A uh, rental space is going for in Rutherford County and plug that in to the to the MOU that we sent down to the state of Tennessee. So I, I would assume it's in review. I did call the Commissioner of Safety and uh, ask Commissioner Long if he could be and his assistant commissioner if they could help light a fire also and let's get going on that as well. Because I have continued to get complaints about the uh, uh, lines out here at the DMV. The yeah. lady yesterday said she spent four and a half hours waiting to get the new driver's license, you know, because you got to get still her at the star mm -hmm. attached to it. She waited four and a half hours, which is just. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ben, any, any comments on it? Okay. Mm -hmm. so they have already started construction on the new fire hall the city has yeah, right no, behind no. us. Yeah where we're going to be placing it on the uh, corner of Blaze and Fortress. Mm. So they broke ground a couple weeks ago. Any questions on that project? Okay, update on the Old Bank and Cohen Building. Yes, sir. We met over there last week. Uh, ben was able uh, to get us in. There are, uh, there's a, a group that is very, very interested in it. They looked at our building and they looked at the uh, old Elrod building where uh, uh, the guidance center was previously located and they moved out. But there's, they said it was very dark and there's no windows in that building right next to Puckett's. And they really liked our building and, mm -hmm. and so they tentatively kind of, it's somewhere between 500 and 700,000 that they would be willing to. They're bringing some other contractors in and uh, so they're looking somewhere in that neighborhood of making an offer to us. Mm -hmm. I would really like to, if they can develop that, us get it back on the tax roll, yeah. uh, and they make a nice development yeah. out of it. You know, kind of a 
similar to what they have done in Gallatin. Uh, this company hasn't, but they've been they've gone over and looked at that, but it's an entrepreneurial center. It's becoming kind of popular where you go in and people rent just an office space and use a common conference room and a common um, uh, workroom with a copy machine and stuff. And then as you grow your business from that, that young uh, entrepreneurship, it grows into it. So I think that's what they have in mind, maybe a coffee shop downstairs or a Starbucks or something. So that'd be good for the square. And renovate the existing building. Renovate the existing building. They they, they know uh, they got to climb on the roof. We took them down and, and uh, they saw the, the dirt floor and the sewage grinder and, and you know they saw it all. You know uh, probably the coin building. Uh, I recommended they just tear that down until they raise it there in the back and then put in uh, private parking for that building. Because it's the coin building's not in good shape at all. Um, but the bones on the old bank building is still solid. Okay. Yeah. I think update us on all the projects that we got going, as far as I know. Um, what about on the roof at community care? It's not on the agenda. Yeah. The, we, we've replacing, we thought we were going to have to replace quite a bit more of that roof than we actually are. Mm -hmm. And so it's, a lot of their problem areas are actually still under warranty. And so right now we're waiting to see what the, what the manufacturer is going to do with his warranty. But it's substantially less than what we thought. Than what we thought. And so it's, I got this pretty good report. And so, so there are four more years left on that, isn't it? There's part of the roof. It's still got about five years. There's a couple of little sections, just little small sections that there's no warranty. It's old. And I think the biggest problem they saw is where it's got so many different materials up there that they've tried to connect together that kind of come in unglued. And so they think it's going to be more, a lot, Quite a bit of repair, but as far as replacement, mm -hmm. it's really not going to. I think, I think he's estimating 150,000. That that would be at 16 to 18 dollars a foot, which hopefully that's a really high number. But you, you don't know for sure. But it was good news anyway. So. Mr. Chairman, can I take you back to the uh, old judicial building sure. and these notes? Sure. Uh, we did have. Um, school board we had three members from the school board come they had inquired when we were at the ribbon cutting in Rockville they had inquired about maybe uh, us donating some of the pews and what they're interested in is very similar to what they have there at Stewart's Creek is sitting up a mock trial uh, and let the teams debate each other and, and taking some of the uh, fixtures out of the old judicial building and sitting up like a, a mock uh, cool. uh, courtroom yeah. to where the kids can debate and put in the pews and then for whatever additional pews that we have we're going to reach out to some churches and make donations to those pews instead of toss them in the landfill. Well, I thought we had a sale of some stuff. We well we did sell, matter of fact we, we sold, uh, Steve got 15,000 Somewhere in that neighborhood. About fifteen thousand dollars worth of material. Yeah, 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 somewhere in that neighborhood to uh, the uh, TV show. It's a mini series called uh, Bluff City Law that they're filming down in Memphis, and they want to set up a mock uh, or a courtroom in a warehouse down there and shoot the film down there. So we it was the same one that uh, Miranda Lambert cut her video in. They wanted that courtroom for what? Well, you don't need a motion for that. No, sir. I did, uh, man, I got a call from, from uh, Michael at Paul's yesterday. He's got a compressor out. I guess I'll be contacting you on that. I'm not sure, but he probably okay. probably called the office. But he's going out on FLMA uh, next week, I believe, for about six weeks. We'll get it. Okay. Do I need a more updates? No, sir. Yes. I'm done.
understood that they would come back in August when we first, because uh, they need to go out and do the review to come back right, and tell us, right. and that was the condition of that contract. So this is, it's not on there, but they're here to make their PowerPoint. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, we uh, we are, are here. We're very, very happy to be here to make our proposal uh, for the adult detention facility. Really want to thank. I, think that I gave one copy. I think everybody's got it on their uh, iPads. Yeah. It should be downloaded on your iPad. Um, I just want to thank the mayor, first of all, for kind of starting us on this journey. He recognized the potential to use performance contracting uh, at the adult detention facility to make some much needed improvements uh, to the facility. And uh, he's kind of started us on the journey. I appreciate your uh, recommendation to the County Commission last time for us to uh, develop the scope for this project. So we're here basically to talk about our you know, where we are, where we're, where we're looking to go, uh, the, the summary of the project, the financials that came in on the project, and Rob, our energy engineer here, uh, plus has been working really hard the last several weeks uh, getting these energy conservation measures identified, the savings uh, numbers put together. So. Where we are in the, in the development of this project, you know, back in, in May, we met with this, this committee. Uh, then we met, got the county commission approval to develop a project back in June. And we've been really working very diligently, very hard to get subcontractors in here, to give us firm, fit price, firm fixed pricing, uh, to enter into a contract with the county. And we're back here at the August property management commission meeting, committee meeting. and. Uh, you know, based on your recommendation and, and approval to, to move this to the county commission, we can uh, we can seek to enter into a contract with the county on this project. So I just wanted to kind of go over the week. We kind of told you a little glimpse of what we were going to look at at the at the project back when we met with you initially. A lot of those needs that the that the sheriff's office had were already kind of identified, and we just basically did our due diligence to really get the numbers down on those projects. So. Um, you know, their compelling need, they were, you know, they were here already in, through the budget process to say, hey, we need some more laundry capacity at this facility. We just, we can't do all the laundry. So getting that additional laundry equipment in this project was, was important. Um, we even added a couple new dryers so they would have four washers and four dryers. But they didn't really have the space in the existing laundry room to accommodate this new equipment. So we have included expansion of that uh, that room, the construction, uh, and, and all the you know piping and HVAC conduit, all that in that little room to accommodate a new uh, new space. Uh, they had old, worn out, you know end of life HVAC on top of the women's and uh, medical unit. Uh, so we're they got in this project to replace those with uh, high efficiency uh, trained rooftop units. They've done a great job. Joe Sergeant Scott, you know, is doing a wonderful job over there for the facility and, and uh, keeping things going. Uh, we are just looking to finish the LED conversion in the facility. So the rest of the men's cells, 400 cells, and uh, some of the stairwells and a few offices. And then water conservation was uh, really a, an issue on several levels. One, the water cost and the sewer cost were very, very high. And they had, you know, inmates flooding cells two, three times a week, and that was causing a lot of, you know, maintenance issues and security issues, and it was actually damaging other floors with this water. So uh, we came in with a solution to 
do a lot of water conservation projects, and, and Rob will kind of fill you in on, on where that all went. But uh, that that saved a lot of money. We can kind of talk about what those savings are uh, in this next slide. So all those same improvement measures are listed here on your left. I'll use this little pointer. So these are the water conservation, laundry expansion, LED, the kitchen that controls those rooftop HVAC units. And you can see across here, we've got electrical savings, the natural gas savings, water savings, operational savings. So these are the total savings that Siemens going to guarantee. We're going to give the county a guarantee that these savings dollars will be met year after year. They're act they'll actually increase year after year in these amounts. So you can see how that water conservation, that's $138,000 a year that we're going to save out there. That, that totals almost $177,000. This is the project cost here. So, you know, 13 and a half years are simple payback on the project. All right, hope you can read this all right. But, so this is the, what we call the project cash flow. This is the financials. This is what you know, the county said, you know, we want to do a project. You know, we'll look at a term over 15 years, but we don't want it to impact the county budget. We want it to be budget neutral. So first of all, these are those same savings that we guarantee. You can see that $177,000 year one cumulative savings. And then I guess this, this increases a little bit each year. So this gives you the savings each of these 15 years. So it's 176, 870, 866 number is the savings. These are the program costs. So to fund this project, we're going to look at borrowing some money, okay? Over a 15-year term, we have to pay principal and interest on that borrowed money. So we'll have this principal and interest payment, this performance assurance to make sure we can give you this guarantee, do all the engineering to guarantee that. This gives you the total cost in year one. Well, it's 176,866. It equals the program savings that are guaranteed. That leaves the county with zero net cash flow year one, year two, year three, all the way out there. So at year 15, you actually have a positive $21,000 going to the county. So that's pretty much the summary of the, of the, the financials of the cost, the savings, finance period, 18 years. We did this at a 2.65% interest rate. That's what we got from a bank that said, you know, we can give you that rate right now. That rate may be lower. You know, Lisa Nolan said, hey, you know, we issue these bonds all the time to buy school property and school, build schools in this county, you know, 40, 50, 60 million dollar bonds. You can get a lot better rate going into a big bond like that, probably. So this is just what we're going to came back to you with. We can we can get you a rate of this amount. It still gives you this, you know, sure. budget neutral. So we'll let budget uh, make that decision. Yeah, we'll if it comes out later, budget will make that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, this is this is guaranteed 2.65. Right, we can not be we, any higher than that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we right. could be lower. Yeah, right. sure. We can put together a project for that. We won't be higher. Right, right, <laughs> right. If it is lower, it'll shave off some of the term or give you more cash at the end of the 15 years. Okay. Right. So that's kind of the, the project overview. And, the, and you know, I wanted to make sure and cover the dollars, I guess, even though you, know, you guys may be more concerned with the scope. I wanted to kind of turn it over to Rob. We did put one more slide together, just, you know, some local governments. Montgomery County was really interested in, you know, what's the environmental impact, how many you know, cars are off the road and that sort of thing. But it shows even this 13,773,000 gallons of water saving. So there's a tremendous amount of water saved and, you know, electric, natural gas and so forth. But the next, next part of this really is for Rob to, you know, kind of explain, you know, his due diligence in, in going through all this uh, for the past few weeks. And uh, Rob, I'll let okay. you, you can drive it. You just turn it on the wheel. I'll let you drive it. And I'll all right. Go. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't have to mess it up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like uh, Ron was saying, we went through the building with a fine tooth comb. And uh, uh, Sergeant Scott and his group have done a really great job. They've upgraded 95% of the building to LED lamps already. Uh, what they haven't done, though, is the men's cells. So there's 400 men's cells and the chases that serve each one of those cells. So 
we're including uh, the lighting upgrades in, in those cells and those chases. There's a few few places in the admin area where they have decorative canned lighting that will switch over to LED. And then also in the stairwells, they're still running some old TA lighting. So we'll switch over those to LED as well. Um, that's pretty much it for the lighting. We may even have some extra lights left over, right? Yeah. On the water side, as Brian was saying, this is where we we knew you guys were spending a lot of money on water, so we were able to really concentrate on that. And the savings are going to be broken into kind of two two different groups. Uh, the first group is by putting in uh, lower rated flush valves and lower rated aerators and things like that, we're going to save a lot of money on water. The second group is where we're really saving the money is in how the inmates use the water. So what we're proposing to put in is a networked system that controls the amount of flushes every inmate can have and controls the amount of shower time an inmate can have. So the way we modeled it was right now, we think conservatively, inmates are flushing the toilet about 16 times a day. Uh, that sounds like a whole lot for us, but you have to remember they're using it as a garbage can. They're using it, excuse me, as a courtesy flush thing because they have a roommate. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why they flush the toilets this much. Our proposal takes it down to 11 flushes per day. So we'll put in the, the network system that will actually control the amount of flushes they can do in a single day. And that's on a permit inmate <coughs> basis. And sheriffs? You all good with that? that yes. They're not going to. Yes, we've discussed it in depth. They're, they're not going to ride because they can't flush 16. Well, times. Uh, <laughs> they're not, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve, <laughs> and anything that we do, they can go through this learning curve. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, we're happy with it, and we'll make it work. Okay. There are other facilities that do even less than that. Yeah, so and so we're, and we're not going to. They, they they come up next is a shorter shower time, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing about it is, like, there's 400, there's 400 men cells and 84 women cells. There's 484 cells. Um, so by controlling the flushes on those, we can cut the water dr dramatically. But in each cell block, there's a common bathroom in the actual cell block. We're not going to touch that. We'll just let them use that so that if they run out of flushes in their cell, there's a backup for them to go use the restroom and, you know, they're not using a dry toilet to, to go to the bathroom and things like that. But there is going to be some behavioral well, training. Something I hadn't thought about too, was we, we've talked about that a little bit, is a lot of times they'll use it to flush a contraband or something they want to get rid of, and they can lock that out, and they can put it in there, and all of a sudden they can't flush it, and they can walk in there and see what they were trying oh, to wow. get rid of. So yeah, so we're going to be able to control that? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. going to have a network, network yeah, control. Yeah, we're network control. <coughs> we're we're going to put a computer in on each floor in the guard station and then one in the women's uh, area. And then the person operating that computer will have complete control over the, the water in the toilets and the water in the showers. Um, so if you want to do a contraband search on a cell block, they can turn all of the toilets off. They can, guards can go in there and they can't flush anything down them at that time. So it's this little bit of a... A surprise, you know, on, on their side. You know. <laughs> this thing won't flush. But. Um, well, the other thing about it was when we started modeling the water usage, we also learned through interviews and through through the modeling process that th there's no time limit on the showers. These guys can go in and they can take as many showers as they want a day, and they can stay in the shower as long as they want. So for modeling purposes, we're using 11 minutes per inmate per day. And that's probably just one shower. We know that some of them are taking more than one shower. Trustees are out in the field working, so they come in the afternoon and take another shower. But we used 11. We're going to cut that down to five minutes. So that's six minutes of running water time. On top of the fact that we're taking the shower heads from two and a half gallons a minute down to one and a half gallon a minute. So there's quite a bit of savings on the water side here. The other purpose of the lockout system, too, that's controlled through the network is, is flooding. Um, we know that these guys get angry for no reason sometimes, or they may have a reason. 
but what they end up doing is stuffing sheets into the toilet system and then flushing the toilet just to get attention so they flood their cells. So if that occurs, then the lockout system will, will not allow more than a couple of flushes in a few minutes. So it'll keep it, keep it under control for you. And the guard will have the ultimate control over whether to flush or not. And another thing, too, is uh, anytime there's any type of vandalism or whatever in our facility, we're charging the inmates. Uh, criminally, yeah. Criminally. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not just, oh, don't do that anymore. So we do charge them criminally and take them to court. That's good. Uh, and we've been getting six to nine months out of the sentence. We got one the other day, it was two and a half years mm -hmm. out. So, Mm -hmm. Consecutive, it's not concerned. Added to the sentence. Uh, we're trying very hard to control our facility that you know, we've got to protect. Sounds good message. So, you presented all this to public safety. Are they are they aware of uh, that? That'll be Monday night. That'll be Monday night. Monday night. Monday night. Yes. Public safety. Sorry. 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 Okay. So, we've gotten about 47% savings on the water side. So, quite a bit. We're, going, we're cutting about 13 million gallons a year on the out of the 33 million we use right now. Uh, one of the biggest compelling events they called us in for was the laundry facility. So right now you guys have two machines, they're two 100 pound washers and two, two dryers, I think they're 120 pound dryers, um, that you use and they use them 24 seven, 365 days a year. So they're running three shifts of laundry to try to keep up. So I know that Sergeant Scott had gotten some pricing and stuff to add two more machines and add two more dryers. <clears throat> we, we contacted the people he got the pricing from and um, they gave the same quote to us. So it's, we're just passing it through. Now, as far as the room goes, there's no room. This is a fairly small area. It's about a 20 by 20 room. So we're proposing to actually expand the room the room sits in the front of a storage area. So we're gonna push the walls out 15 feet back into the storage area and enclose them 22 feet across. <clears throat> this drawing shows the existing setup right now. That's the storage area that he's pointing at right now. The drawing on the right will be the new configuration. Um, the other thing we're doing is right now within the old laundry room, there's a mechanical access to the dryers in the back okay. where they're vented and where the gas comes in. We're actually removing that and it's going in the storage room. So now within the actual laundry room, there'll be no access to that mechanical area. So it kind of, you know, we keep the inmates out of there secure. as well. So it's a secured, secure area now. And that'll be the new configuration there. Any questions on that? It's not really a major undertaking to add that. 15 feet to these? Well, it's not semi and not on the walls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we have to run uh, water piping right. for the four machines. Right. We have to run ventilation piping through the outside walls. We have to put in makeup air for the dryers. Then we have to put in gas piping. We have to put in electrical. Uh, then we have to put in HVAC. We have to move the lights around. And there's sprinkler pipe in the way, so we have to move all that too. So it's quite a construction job. <coughs> that, that was really a leading question. I knew the walls would be good. <laughs> the walls are the easy part. And they'll be left with all the drawings. And yeah, and we'll, we'll submit drawings, and they'll be stamped, and, and uh, you can review them and give your final approval on it. How about those machines? Will they go out for bid or what? No, we purchase them directly. You do? Yeah. Okay. And the reason I was asking that, we did it. Community Care Nursing Home, we bought some new washers. Okay. Yeah, in the state of Tennessee, performance contracting falls under uh, like an engineering yeah, service. There was, a, there was a bill passed for so performance. Our, procure, oh, okay. our procurement method doesn't have to. Okay. Now, with that said, internally, we do require three bids on most things. Uh, unless we're trying to fast track something and, or if you have a preferred vendor you want to use. Sergeant Scott just gave us Odell laundry equipment uh -huh. in Knoxville. That's who he got the quote from. So that's the quote we used. We got in contact with them and they're going to come set the machine, start them up. They're going to do all the work on the machines themselves once we get the room ready for them. In addition, we're going to put in what's called ozone generators on the machines. 
this is where we're getting our, our savings from. It's not a lot of savings compared to the cost of the room, but it is savings that help the project. So the ozone generators will actually, they'll, they'll, they're good at killing microbials, so they're 99.9% .9 of microbials that kill them. Cuts down on your hot water a lot, so you don't have to go through as many hot water rinse cycles, and you don't have to use as much soap, soap and chemicals in the wash because the ozone will actually, it's a bubble injector that gets into the water and takes all that out. And one of the side effects is it makes your laundry smell good and it's a lot softer. <laughs> so I'm sure the guys will appreciate that. Any questions on that? Okay, and then uh, the rooftop units. It's just a simple rooftop unit replacement. Uh, we went with six five-ton package units and two ten-ton package units. They're high efficiency units, so they're a little higher efficiency than what you have right now. And then we'll, we'll do all of the connections and we're, uh, there's also new roof curbs that come with them, which will adapt them from the old system to the new system. We figure that'll take, we're gonna do no more than one a day, hopefully two a day. So we'll have a crane out there on site for at least a full week that will help us do that. But when we take one down, it has to be back up that same day. What I saw here is too, this, they, they're already due for replacement. So what would happen is the sheriff would have to come in for a budget request, or if one failed, you know, all of a sudden they've got a risk of, you know, right now if one failed, you know, things get hot or not being able to keep cool. So it reduces the risk, it eliminates coming in for a budget, you know, request for these units, and they're more efficient, gonna save some money too, so. And the last uh, thing we're looking at is uh, some fume hood controls. You guys have uh, pretty substantial fume hoods in your kitchen. They're about 40 feet long. Um, there's two exhaust fans and a makeup air unit in each one of them. And uh, through talking with the kitchen staff, uh, they come in at 3 in the morning, and they basically you see a light switch on the end of that, that right there. They flip it on. It turns the two exhaust fans on, the makeup air unit on, and they run until seven o'clock that night when they leave. There's a lot of downtime, no, non-cooking time in, the, in those periods. So these, these controls we put in, that we put sensors throughout the, uh, the hoods themselves, and they look at smoke, heat, heat and temperature. Um, smoke and temperature, that's what it is. And the hotter it gets, they'll ramp the fans up, and then they'll ramp them back down uh, when they're not needed. So it's a good good way of controlling. It does that automatically. It does it automatically, yeah. So the average motor speed is going to go from 100% down to about 40%, we feel. It's like pumping all that cold air to keep the kitchen cool, and then it's being sucked yeah. you know, out the hood all day. <clears throat> yeah, there's there's heating and cooling savings associated with it, yeah, too. Yeah, so right, right now they're running 100% all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And three, three. For most of the day. Yeah, for about 16 hours a day, 365 days a year. So. Mm -hmm. That's pretty I'm much gonna, it. I mean, I'll give you some credit on this next slide. That Rob yeah. did look at, you know, a lot of other what we call energy conservation measures, and uh, I guess he can explain them. But you know, we didn't. We tried. If, if, if you things were already efficient enough, then that was good. So. Yeah, we like I say, we no no stone unturned type attitude when we went in there. Uh, we brought in uh, boiler experts out of Chattanooga, and we ran efficiency tests on your boilers. I know things are running at 86 percent, so there's really nothing to add to that. That's really, really good. Uh, we looked at stack economizer, which is recapturing heat off the stack and putting it back into the unit. Uh, energy efficient motors wasn't really worth going after because it was higher cost than the savings. Um, and then on the building automation side, just because of the nature of the building, it runs 365 days a year, 24-7. There's really no savings really to be had by trying to set things back or, or turn things off because uh, to keep the building at a certain temperature, they have to run the set points really low. 68 degrees is what they run them at. Um, I, I know everybody set their thermostats to 78 right now, right? <laughs> no, no, no. The, the, new, the new government <laughs> standard. <laughs> that will be no. <laughs> And then we looked at the, the coolers and the freezers too, and they're just not large enough to, to do the kind of controls that we would do in the bigger systems. 
the state more or less controls what your temperature is supposed to be in there anyway, or don't they? But the, a TCI, the, the comfort level. The well, comfort level. Yeah, they, it, it has to be a comfortable temperature. And that's yeah. basically you get a little. You know, get a little bit of flood, but it's, so. it's got to be maintained. You have to think of the, the fact that they, it's 68 because there's a large population in there all the time. Mm -hmm. So it just even though the set point 68, you're not running at 68. So it's probably more up in the mid 70s. In that range. Yeah, that's I just want to rub. I just want to say I really appreciate it. He he did a great job. You know, we had a kind of a tight time frame to get back here by by this meeting and and bringing all these people in from all over the state and looking at a lot of things. So I just thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Well, yeah, it was. I made a lot of friends out there. <laughs> And, and the sheriff's office, you know, y'all, y'all been great to work with. Uh, you know, too. We appreciate you. We've gotten back together. We've talked about what the needs are and identified those things and made this project work. So, this week, do we have any questions from the committee members on this project? And I guess, you know, our request is to to make a recommendation to the the county commission to uh, accept our project proposal and and move to contract. Becky, if you would write that motion up, I would make that motion to cover, to cover all the ground. I think uh, we will have to forward this on the budget Go ahead. based on the cost. So we can approve the project and send it on the budget. And uh, you said that public safety is looking at it. We did go to I, don't, I, don't I don't see a reason because it, it just well, the recommendation. Well, just information on it. Yeah, information yeah, only. Yeah, yeah, you're not aware to come to Monday night and make a presentation. No, I don't have to do that, but it needs to be it need to be on the agenda. Probably to budget. information only. So the thing that's going on since yeah, sure. it's I need to be public safety. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, Mr. Chairman? Ron says he's willing to come back Monday, so. If Come back. Uh, oh, she, uh, I, can't, I can't come with this right again. It'll be out of town Monday. I forgot. Oh, I can come. I can come. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank more committees that look at this, the night of the commission will be should be a lot easier because I've got they have all the information on the, uh, this project. I agree. Fifth September. Fifth so if we're going to advocate for this out of here, if, if that's the will of the body, we, um, the, the numbers, Lisa's looked at the numbers, or was she, we can speak sure. to that in budget. In budget, she'll okay. make the she'll recommendation okay. in budget as to, uh, I've asked her to be prepared to say this 2.65% looks good, or we, we did uh, had a conference call with S&P and Moody's yesterday. She'll be prepared to give that report, but everything is looking very good. And the uh, so we may just bond the whole thing. I, you know, it's it looks her, like it pays her, for itself if you do. Yeah, her in your spreadsheet, your pro forma had that interest carry the burden of 2.69 carried sure. with the savings, right? It was all in yes. this. Yeah. And um, the uh, the confirmation of your performance, that language. And if you don't perform, the consequences are, are have been looked at in the contract. It's in the contract, that's correct. Yeah. Um, Nick has, has reviewed it. <coughs> so right. I have a question about that, actually. He, so the attorney looked at it. He sent us some comments, so we have the overlaid those on the contract his his request for some changes he had a couple red line um, indemnification mainly changes sure. and some timelines but there was one open item that he expressed I don't like the way it's written but he didn't share a suggestion of how he would like it so how would you like generally when we send it to our attorney the best sure. results are as we, we can send him something that says this is how they like it written and they might massage it but 
if, it, it's, if it's just a blanket, like I don't like it. That's what I was going to say. What's the best way to do that? I'll just, I'll just have them reach out okay. to your attorney or you? Just or have them reach out to me. Okay. All right. We do. Maybe we can go discuss and go over all this and be for budget. We'll have it all done by budget. Absolutely. Because we, we, we don't need to delay. We don't need to be able to get it out of this committee. That's correct. Need to say. So, okay, read, read the motion how it will read. Accept the Siemens proposal as presented to proceed to contract and forward to the budget committee. That sounds like I said that. Yes. <laughs> and so second by Commissioner Dodd. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Any other discussion on this project? Not. Call the roll. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner McAfee? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Sir? Now would be a good time to ask him for a raise. Yeah. <laughs> if I thought he could give me one, I would. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I thought you'd appreciate that. Thank you. 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 On the other business anymore? Mr. Chairman, one last thing. Uh, we should have brought it up when we're talking about the, the current courthouse. I, I saw a, a note that Ben had made in here, and it reminded me when the, the blower kicked on. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a company come in from, Bart Klein had a company come in from uh, uh, California. He was passing through, so we got him to come in, and he did a sound test. The, the problem was when they put in the new air conditioning system, it's yeah. right, right behind this wall, right over your head, Paul. And so when it kicks on, it uh, the, they said the valuation when he when he tested it and he had this meter. Meter. <laughs> he said a lot of the noise was actually coming through our light fixtures, hmm. where it's blowing out, and then it been and <clears throat> so. Ben's going to put out an RFP, and, and if nothing comes back to try to soften that, the, the, the problem we had for those who were here in years past, we used to have microphones here on the desk, and and it would pick up on TV, people doing this or <laughs> rustling papers or whatever else. So that's when they went to the suspended, and sometimes it's hard for us to hear uh, with those in here. But I think that we can we can probably soften. Soften that through baffles in the ductwork. It would be easier to hear. So, Ken's going to take care of the RFP on that. Okay. All right, that's anything it. else on the. No, sir, that's it. Any so. committee member got anything on the other business? <coughs> on our, uh, since everybody's here, on our uh, lease vehicles. Everything, everything's rolling on the lease vehicles with uh, Enterprise. Uh, I think we got an email from Mary Elizabeth Rowe yesterday on the truck, one of the trucks for uh, planning, I think it was a truck, but everything's moving forward. Um, some of them, they're, they were kind of waiting to see what they could get and they're going to try to get As a matter of fact one two of the vehicles that they showed showed us actually uh they were able to get 2020s instead of 2019s and the 2020s actually came in with the same equipment cheaper than the 2019s so uh, those all the vehicles that have been ordered should be rolling in here around the first of november Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Adjourn. <laughs> Stole your thunder, Chairman. Right. <laughs>